Welcome to Abenita's maternity program antenatal class. Today we're speaking with Sister Talia about anemia in pregnancy. Welcome, Sister Talia. Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome. Yes, today I'll be speaking about anemia in pregnancy. This is quite an important um, conversation to have because a lot of moms has gone for their gynae visits, usually at about 12 weeks onwards, and then they've mentioned this word, and you get given a script with medication and you don't actually know what to do. So first of all, what is anemia? So this is a word you hear, and it basically means having low iron. So what does it do? So anemia is when your body doesn't produce enough blood cells, and specifically red blood cells, which transports the oxygen in the body throughout the body to give everywhere oxygen supply and blood supply. So that is basically what anemia is. And when we say red blood cells, this is a big, big thing. They are the oxygen carriers. They carry oxygen to all your vital organs, like your heart, your brain, your muscles, your skin, kidneys, and everywhere else. So we get different types. So usually when you act your doctor and he starts giving you a script, that is mild anemia. It can sometimes happen, the demand of pregnancy, so this growing baby that's taking all your vitamins and minerals can sometimes leave you feeling quite tired, a little bit out of breath at times and sometimes a little bit dizzy. Now, severe anemia happens when you actually notice it before a doctor even does. You will start to be out of breath, tired, dizzy, irritable, find it hard to concentrate, especially moms that still at work and having to get ready for, for maternity leave. And your heart may feel like it's racing. It's just going very fast. And those are then basically the signs of anemia and you would go for your visit. Why does anemia start in pregnancy? Really easily because of the body's high demand due to the baby ever growing, the baby's taking a lot of your supply and due to possible vomiting, we have to remember that not all moms are able to keep food down in the early um, days of pregnancy or even take medication they are supposed to take because they are nauseous or vomiting a lot. And iron is very difficult to absorb in the body. That's why iron is quite a, a difficult mineral to maintain and to keep in our bodies as well. So how do I test if I'm anemic and how do I manage it? So the basic test is when you go to your gynecologist during your first, usually 12 weeks of visit, you will check it at about 12 weeks, um, 14 weeks, 15 weeks. It depends how early you go to your gynae. And then it will be rechecked at 28 weeks. Remember, as baby is growing, the demand is growing as well. At baby's taking off that eye and you need it to kind of cope every day, all that oxygen supply to the body transporting. So by 28 weeks, it usually plummets. If, if in early pregnancy, it was good and you got a script and you never took the medication, it usually plummets by 28 weeks and then we have to now maintain it. So if I'm anemic, how do I manage it? Firstly, please aim to do all your health checks. If it's your gynecological visit or you want to see a midwife and you're doing the natural route with the midwife early in pregnancy. So usually 12, um, 12, 14 weeks, it's an appropriate time where you start phoning around and getting your appointments ready. And if you start going at about 15 weeks, 16 weeks, that's perfectly fine because we can still do a lot of tests at that time. That's quite early. And we can monitor the levels. This is probably one of the first tests all gynees love to do. So women are also advised to take folic acid. They go hand in hand, the iron and folic acid supplement, because they both are oxygen carriers. And they also help against baby having any type of uh, malformation or anything like that. And it's usually continues for at least the first three months. We are very, very, um, you know, uh, strong on moms taking folic acid, especially. And you can get it over the counter. So you don't actually need a script for it at all. And it reduces the risk of birth defects, as mentioned before. So now we're going to go to eating right. Eating healthy is still a very big factor in anemia. I do know if you are quite nauseous and you're not feeling well, it's quite difficult to keep it all in. But those that can and you are able to try and get the good thing. So what is the good thing? So vitamin B12 is found in our meat, our fish, shellfish. Obviously, if you're pregnant, we don't want you eating prawns or mussels or things like that. But it's also in your normal fish as well. So cereals, eggs, spinach, I know it's, it's a big thing for iron, beetroot, and also your fruits. 
vegetables i always tell moms your beans your broccolis your beef and then your livers livers are quite a good source of protein it's loved by south africans because it's also very um economical you know it's cheap and it's something that goes also very quick especially if you're in a rush you're coming from work and you want to make something quick quick your livers and even some spinach and you can make it nice i always tell moms don't um, go and boil up livers it's going to look terrible uh, make it nice with some nice spices and add some uh, nice things with it your spinach add nice cream you know uh, make it look nice and and I think that also adds to it not feeling like this is your mom giving you it sounds almost like the diet we used to eat when we were little Brussels sprouts another one and again make it with a nice piece of fish you know fish you enjoy eating um, with a little lemon juice on top asparagus very good sauce and um, also look at how it's priced you know how is your vegetables and what is in season those are the things we normally um, it tastes better and it's fresher as well so women that are vegetarian that's another question I get a lot what do we do lentils I love lentils even in my home I add it with most things because it's a good source of protein um, and it's uh, great for the kids if you jazz it up a bit, you know, um, beans. Tofu is a big source. Your eggs, if you are able to eat eggs, and your soy milk. And then always see a dietitian as well. If you are um, anemic and you've been diagnosed as anemia and you are vegetarian, it is a good idea, especially if you're very strict vegetarian, where eggs is not on, um, uh, you know, and it's maybe just tofu and lentils that you allow then please see them and to add a vitamin B supplement. Usually your gynae can help you, give you a script for that as well, or over the counter, but don't overdo it. Um, and then citrus fruit, avoid tea and coffee. Tea and coffee does not let iron be absorbed. So it's something that actually takes the iron out of all these great things you've been eating. So avoid it. You know, rooibos tea is perfectly fine, but tea, we need mean the black tea and coffee, we mean like the actual coffee, not decaf, because it doesn't help the absorption of iron at all. And then we have our third point, which is supplement, supplement. I mentioned it earlier about the tea and coffee when you're taking um, the food um, for the absorption of the iron, but also the same with vitamins. Avoid it if you're on the vitamin because it delays it. And if you're going to have coffee, not huge amounts. Have that one cup in the morning that will just make your day. And the rest of the day, just try and take it easy with it. All women are advised to take iron and folic acid supplements when planning on pregnancy. So planning is a big part of it. If you do know um, you've struggled when you were younger with anemia, try and to have that ready before you even fall pregnant, especially the first three months of pregnancy. It's very crucial that you take it. Um, eating your foods, as mentioned earlier, the earlier foods I mentioned wasn't just reaching iron, by the way, it was also reaching your iodine, your fo folic acid, which is folate. And many women are advised to take their iron supplements if they are iron deficient. However, again, I mentioned it lastly, vegetarians and vegans may be advised to take vitamin B supplements. So these supplements are very important. Why? Um, because again, they make up for what you may be not allowed, especially strict vegetarian, vegetarians. They, they do not take certain things in, so they must avoid it if possible.